Okay. Okay, so we are indeed live on YouTube. Uh, you know what? Just for shits, clowns, let's just push this out to Periscope too, right? Why not, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Everybody look beautiful. <laughs> We're going wide. There we go. Stop broadcasts. And we are I smile. live I on smile the for the camera. You smell what? I smiled for the camera. Oh, did you? Nice. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Well, welcome everyone to another edition of the Four Guys with Quarters podcast. This is indeed episode number 185 for October 11th, 2018. We are happy to be joined again by a very special guest this week, filling out that fourth chair very nicely lately, and we hope to continue to do so. Um, so I'll introduce him first since uh, he's the star of the show, you know, staying up until midnight <laughs> local time. Uh, to be on this program with us, stepping out of his comfort zone a little bit since he's mainly geared towards Xbox, being an Xbox MVP, of course. But uh, we got Delicious Cheese from the Party Chat podcast. Last week we had Ross. This week we got Delicious Cheese, another member of that great that great show. So uh, welcome, welcome to the show, man. Hey, man. Great to be here. Nice. I know we're going to have fun with this guy. I can already tell. All right. <laughs> Moving on to the usual panel, making his 185th straight appearance. We have ZPCI Assassin. What's going on, man? Hi. And yeah, j just as usual, just saying that hi. You know? That was oddly sensual, man. Yes, that's that's how it is every <laughs> week, man. I I try to convince him to go to something else. He says he only changes it up every 100 podcasts, so... I don't okay, know. You gotta okay. wait, you gotta wait a long time for this kid to to change it up on us. But oh man, and I'm Inferno two and seven, of course. Uh, and last but not least, we have Italian clowns trying to work out his uh, his boom arm and uh, webcam setup right now. But uh, he's working on it, and it's looking pretty good. What's going on? Hey, what's going on? We got a we got a nice shot, top shot of his head right now, but. Uh, Everyone, everyone's probably uh, knows what's below that, that big, long beard of his. So we don't really have to see that right now anyway. So, but um, yeah, this week we got, you know, a ton of, a ton of stuff to actually talk about. Uh, some Xbox related, some PlayStation, even some Nintendo news to throw in. So it's really the trifecta of console news, really. But uh, before we get into that, I want to thank our um, affiliate the Inner Circle Network. We're actually an affiliate podcast of theirs, so check out in the description below uh, for the link for the Inner Circle Gaming Network. Um, they've got a bunch of different podcasts that are affiliates that they kind of support a little bit, and um, you know they only bring on the best stuff and uh, stuff that's not, you know, that's sensical and not drama-filled nonsense. So we're glad to be part of that, and uh, we thank them for bringing us on. All right, well, you guys have to learn about our guest because, you know, some people may not know him. If you guys don't watch Party Chat Podcast, you should, but if you don't, uh, you may not know him because he's not as vocal in the uh, Twitter community maybe as uh, as Ross is with some of the some of the, the crazies on Twitter. So uh, why don't you uh, go ahead and tell us what you do, uh, Delicious Cheese. You know, I know you're a part of the industry not only as an Xbox MVP, but... You're also a community manager as well, so tell us about tell us about that. Well, yeah, I am the community manager for a uh, little company in uh, the north of Finland called Fingersoft, uh, and we are most famous for the hill climb racing series, I suppose. Hill climb two. Hill climb. Hill climb racing two. I've checked out. I didn't. I. You know. Sometimes you see those sequels and you see a two or a three, and you're like, oh, I didn't even know there was a first one. But uh, <laughs> Hill Climb Racing 2 is the one that's popped up on my phone uh, more often than not. Um, but are you... Yeah, are you should have. Are you... Uh, mean, uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead, sorry. I was going to say, definitely should have. It's uh, We've had over 1 billion downloads. We passed a billion downloads earlier this year. That's uh, that's so. crazy. That's crazy yeah. stuff. It, it's, it's crazy because, you know, we talk about numbers on this show, about, you know, console sales and game sales. Even on PC, we'll talk about you know, combined numbers of, of game sales. And they're obviously, you know, in the millions, you know, uh, <laughs> usually like single digit min millions, if they're lucky, like tens of millions. But uh, I mean, that many downloads, those ma that many people to kind of manage, uh, you know, their experience. Because I know as a community manager, you guys is kind of the same thing as 
what you'd expect from console gaming. You kind of have to pump up the brand, pump up the game, and and manage kind of negative reviews and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's more or less the same everywhere, and there's a great deal of uh, uh, it's it's really like a great deal of cross pollination because like you know a lot of games are on console and are on mobile at the same time these days. I mean, it's it's super super easy. You look at look at Fortnite and PUBG. You know, they were two of the biggest console gaming franchises in the world, and they're also on on mobile. So yeah, it's it's more or less the same. Uh, just a for us, it's actually more of a difference of where our fans are. Like um, our game is way more way more international than say Xbox. Xbox is very very American and uh, and and like uh, UK focused, I guess at mm -hmm. least where its fans are. So of course, Twitter being the most popular social media platform for those kinds of users, there's there's way 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 more. But like uh, so, our our Twitter account only has like 16 seventeen thousand followers not that many for a, a big company but uh like on facebook we've got five million it's like just because there's way more casual people and way more international people on on facebook so that's that's where our audience tends to be but yeah it's it's just the same job everywhere i guess you just got to talk to people be a part of the community be a fan of the game and and tell Tell the the guys who make the game not that's not what I do. Yeah. Uh, what what the people who play it are saying about it. You know, it's it's a really important job, and I, uh, I it's probably I think the best job in the whole world, in my opinion. Well, you know, I gotta I gotta be honest with you. I was talking about this a little bit with Ross last week when we were talking about um, Karina with her new uh, you know job with um, what do you call it? playground, and um, and you know. The people that I know who do this thing aren't really fans of the job, to be honest. Like they, it's just a lot of work <laughs> for not a lot of pay, you know. No, 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 no. That's all lies. You've got to. I mean, you can do any job and hate it. You know, it's that's that goes without saying. But to be really good at your job, you know, it, it's. I mean, think about it. I get paid to play and talk about video games. I get I get paid to watch YouTube videos about games and and shit post on Twitter. Like that's that's my job, man. Like it's it's pretty good, I have to say. I mean, obviously you have to deal with a lot of hate, uh, right? But see, I I like to even how can I say? Gotta switch my brain into English. Um, so the thing about like. People who get really angry when you make a change about a video game is like that. A lot of people sort of disregard that as just being noise. But when you think about it, like you got to try to understand where's that anger come from? And it comes from like a place of real, real passion and real love for your game. Because think about all the games on mobile, for example, you've played for like two minutes and gone and just uninstalled it and forgotten about it forever. Yep, yep, that's like the that's danger. probably a lot of mobile games and so or any game really and so for someone to be really really like so involved in your game and so passionate about they get your game to actually get that angry you've at least done something right so somehow turning that negative experience into a positive one it's uh it's one of the most satisfying things you can ever do believe me nice i mean i you know I feel like I look at that job and I'm like, wow, you know, people, you know, you're, you're essentially a hype person. I go to conventions, you know, PAX, E3, that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. you see like the hype people at the booth, you know, uh, that you recognize as community managers. Like the first community manager I ever met was Josh Stein, who now obviously <laughs> is with Mixer. Um, uh, and, you know, met Great him. guy, Josh. He is. He's an excellent guy. And, you know, he did his damn hardest to pump up Quantum Break. And, you know, even at... Oh, but uh, Pax and I, I E3. Be, oh, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I gotta be honest though, Josh is just like a hype man all the time. In forever. general, yeah, <laughs> he's right. He's just he's just like that all the time. That is that is not like work face, like game face, and no, 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 no. He's just like that <laughs> right. all the time. Right. Yep. Yep. And you know, I look at that job and I'm like, yeah, that's potentially something I could see myself doing. Or you know, I I do for my work. I do. Um, you know, some trade shows here and there where I obviously have to hype up our product that my company does uh, and sells. And, um, 
you know, I feel I feel like I could see myself in that position. And then I go on stuff like Facebook and Twitter and see people being like, oh, this bug made me lose my microtransactions or this and that and blah, blah, blah. blah. And it's just like, yikes, man. How would, how do you step behind that keyboard that day, you know? But, um, but yeah, you got to take it, the good with the bad, really. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, like I said, the, you do obviously get there is a lot of negativity, but there's a lot more positivity. I mean, considering, like I said, we've passed a billion downloads, which is like one in every seven people, and we are the top grossing uh, racing game on mobile. And so you, you would think that with that much of an audience, like we, we have more monthly active users, like more people play our game every month than Xbox Live has memberships total. Right, yeah. Uh, so it's it's a gigantic audience, and so there's a couple of angry people every now and again, but that's a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction. So it's like the, the, when you think about it proportionately, it's it's not as bad as it could be. <laughs> True. Yeah, that's a good point. And I mean, I just I just love talking about video games, like I'm doing right now. I'm not working right now. I'm just having some fun, and I I, I have do the party chat podcast. I've been doing that for two years now, just just for fun. And I'm an Xbox MVP because I, I do a whole bunch of stuff for Xbox and just for fun. Yeah, yeah. It's it's my my passion, my hobby, and I'm also fortunate enough to have it be my job. So it's like it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Man, it sounds it sounds like the life. It sounds like the life. Um, it but definitely has its its ups and downs. That's for sure. My but brother, my brother used general. to be in the uh, in the gaming industry. He used to uh, he worked for Harmonix that, when they were making Rock Band three. And mm-hmm. um, I'll tell you, sometimes he came home and absolutely hated it. But uh, you know, it's <laughs> kind of, it, it's kind of different when you know crunch time comes and you got to be working. You know, thirteen, fourteen, maybe sixteen hour days. You know, when it gets down to the wire and you got to put that product out. But um, Luckily for community managers, you know, um, you're not making the product, you're just hyping it. So, yeah, I mean, for me, I like, I need to be available 24 hours, seven days, just in case something goes wrong. Uh, but, but I, I mean, our company in general has a zero crunch policy, which it's really nice. Uh, but, um, in in general, my job is way easier than the programmers. I mean, I, I glance over at what they're doing, and it's like I'm looking at the Matrix or, or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> they, they do all the real work. We have uh, incredible artists. Like it's amazing because you know our game is a, it's a mobile game, and it's got really nice 2D graphics, but they're still simple, cartoony, you know, 2D right. graphics. And see their their concept art, it's incredible. And I really wish that that, that could be in the game because it's so good yeah. so yeah i'm 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 just a talentless guy who can talk really long and really loud so they just put me at the front while they actually do the the real work in the back hey that's the prerequisites right that's the prerequisites <laughs> yeah you know i i do have a question about hill climb racing too i'm Absolutely. looking at the, the image that inferno put up uh it looks very awesome i love the cartoonish style um is that assassin driving the jeep with the glasses off Looks well, like it could which, be. It looks like it could be. I mean, that's oh, you mean the main character? That's Bill. I like Bill. Bill is awesome. <laughs> his, name, his name is his name is Bill Newton, and he's our he's our uh, mascot from Hill Climb Racing One and Two. Hill Climb Racing One's really old. Maybe why you haven't heard of it? It's like six years old now. Uh, Bill's oh, birthday wow. is this month, actually. Uh, and happy birthday, Bill! It was yeah, happy birthday to Bill. We got we got lucky. Um, like our game is good, no lie, but we were one of the first kind of like, well, a, a lot of Finnish developers, Supercell, Rovio, Supercell with you know Clash of Clans, Rovio with Angry Birds, and us with uh, with Kill Climb Racing. We were like the first real like sort of two D physics based racing game. You know, it it, it wasn't obviously it wasn't like we weren't the first to make that kind of game. It's been around forever. But we were the first to sort of make a, a big one on mobile. And because of that, we were able to uh, garner a really large audience before mobile gaming really sort of exploded to where it is now. Right. And that's that's why there's a few really, really big mobile companies like us and Supercell and Rovio and King and we Candy Crush and stuff like that, and yeah, and I mean, we're we're not just mobile; we're also on PC, Windows Ten. Right, right. Oh and yeah, mobile, Windows Ten. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, well, Supersonic Station, our YouTube have- chat. Hold on, really quick, clowns, because I want to get this answer, this question answered. I feel like it's been sitting there for way too long. Supersonic Station wants to ask 
Uh, is there a video trailer for this game he can find somewhere? There's tons of them. Um, you can probably find them on the Fingersoft uh, YouTube channel, actually. Fingersoft, uh, I, okay. Obviously. Yeah, Fingersoft. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we, we know it's a funny name. That's We, 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 we have a bit of a reputation as, as being <laughs> less. Uh, 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 our games are kid-friendly, but we, we, we do a bit enjoy a bit of uh, inappropriate jokes every now and again. The party doesn't start until Fingersoft arrives. We actually have a, a party bus. Oh my god, that's party, awesome! <laughs> and a, a, a our party yacht. Oh my god! Wow. <laughs> yeah, our CEO owns like a gigantic. Well, not the CEO, sorry, the owner owns a gigantic yacht, and it's, it's, it's for parties. Hey, that's what you get when you got <laughs> one billion downloads, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's 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 quite nice. Clowns, what were well, you gonna say, Lynn? I was gonna say we have legendary Yeti forty four in the chat. Um, and he's the type of guy that loves to buy microtransactions and no lie. He really dropped like 500 bucks in call of duty loot crates. Is there opportunities for him to buy like loot crates or, uh, anything he'll come racing too? Cause he really loves like add on stuff. Yeah. Um, the game is free, uh, like, like every game on mobile, I guess. And, uh, we monetize in a couple of different ways. Um, you get, uh, like, well, they're, they're loot boxes. They're like little little toolboxes, I guess, with parts in them. Um, you can't, uh, how do I explain our, um, our economy? Like, you can't, it's not pay to win. Uh, that's obviously very important nowadays. As soon as your game's pay to win, it's dead. Um, but uh, basically, we sell skins and we sell, like, uh, gems. And you can use the gems to buy basically anything. You can use them to buy cars, you can use them to buy skins, you can use them to buy more loot crates if you wanted. So if your friend wanted to, he could uh, buy a whole bunch of gems and then spend those gems on stuff, such as loot crates. Sound, sounds perfect, That's right, awesome. Yeah, no, I love cosmetics in games. And uh... yeah, and we, we also just sell the skins as well. Like, just like, you want this skin? Buy it. Here it is. Oh, um, Clowns is salivating now. He's going to yeah. download the game right away. <laughs> I'm probably, probably going to help donate somebody to the game. He's uh, going to fund that yacht, I think. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm definitely needing my second yacht, so I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, hey, they can always make a yacht game next, right? Like racing yeah. yachts or something? No, yeah, it's great. But seriously, I, I'm talking about the boss's yacht, but our company is, is legit good. They spend, I've only joined like three months ago or so. And they spend a ton of money on their their staff. We have all this like we're we're kind of unique that we actually own the whole block. We bought the oh, city nice. blocks, and in the city block, they they turned it into a block of games. If you go to the website, apaya.com, that's a p a j a dot com, it has about this this city block, and we've got a game school and maybe twenty thirty other indie devs who we let have like offices and and space in the area and just the whole block is just all about game development learning about games playing games it's it's amazing and inside the the office we've got like every kind of every console ever made to play we've got vr we've got ping pong we've got a giant like simulator that we've been playing forza horizon 4 on like the, oh, the yeah i saw that the on your twitter wheel. yeah that's awesome yeah yeah it's 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 really cool and it's it's so nice when a, when a company doesn't just funnel all of the money into the boss's yacht. I mean, some it, it is his company, but <laughs> I've got to I've got to give credit where it's due. Especially because they're probably going to be watching this. Hey guys, <laughs> <laughs> there you go, there you go. Well, it, you know, I I do want to say it sounds like a really cool company. It sounds mm. like they take, they take care of their employees, and you know, we actually need more companies like that out there. Um, after what happened to Telltale. So I'm glad to hear oh, yeah. it's, it's an awesome experience for you guys. It's, it's disgusting what some of the, the bigger and older companies do to their employees, to be honest. It's, it's nasty. And I'm hoping that uh, we're a younger company, um, but we're getting bigger and bigger and bigger than uh, eventually, and we're not the only ones. And eventually I think all these younger companies like us and all the sort of new guard who actually care about their employees, and, and, and work very differently to the traditional ones where all of us are eventually going to be like way bigger than them. And, and hopefully we become the new norm so that everybody can have a, a good time because making games is great. It's hard, but it's great because it's, it, 
I mean, we're all here because we love games, right? Right. And, right. and cr creating those, being a part of it is. It's amazing. I, I go into a meeting and I'm like, I actually don't like this. Can we change that? And it's like, yeah, we can. And then it gets changed. And it's like, I just changed a video game. Like, you, you don't normally have that power as a consumer, you know? I mean, you can complain a lot to the community manager who will eventually pass those <laughs> words on. Right, right, but, right. But, but working in games and being able to, like, directly influence your favorite pastime, it's just, it's awesome. It really is. If if you guys, if anyone listening is like really considering a career in games, but he has a lot of bad stuff, screw that noise. You just got to find the right company, and you've just got to have enough passion and enough drive to to really go the distance. It's it's worth it, believe me. Nice. So, awesome. uh, fin finally, some encouraging news from people who work in the industry on this program. <laughs> yeah, it's not all it's not all doom and gloom. I've been I've been working in games for four years now, and it's. It's definitely, I've been laid off before. It, it's rough, you know, especially if you're in the indie game world and, and your company folds. It happens all the time. It's not easy. But we all keep coming back. The gaming hasn't imploded for a reason. You know, everyone who makes games loves them. There's not a, not a single person that I've ever met who works in gaming who doesn't actually like video games. It just doesn't make any sense. Otherwise, you make terrible games that aren't good. Like, you, you never heard of a musician who wrote music they didn't enjoy. It just doesn't make sense. Right. Yep. Yep. Or, <laughs> you know, on the lighter side of things, um, been trying to get Assassin in, involved in the game industry and esports, and oh. he loves first person shooters, and I'm really trying to push him. Uh, but he's just like, go for it, man. One, one word it. answer. No, that's what he always says. Why not? I don't like esports. I could care less about them. Oh yeah, but what what, what don't you like? The the competitive aspect, or just like the you know EA Sports sort of uh, mentality that goes on, or what is it you don't like about esports? Well, I just like like I'll play a game and I'll, I like to have fun, and you go yeah. to like an esports, everyone. You know, try so hard. They sometimes won't. You know, they just want to win. Right, then, right, right. You know, okay. Kids like watch these people, and then they try so hard, and then you get games that are just totally ruined because everyone just wants to be, you know, that next big thing. I got you. Just, I got it's you. It's the, the and the, don't the, let them the you. competitive aspect or whatever. Yeah. You know, like the you have to win. When it comes to first person shooters, assassin is like a god on those things don't want to oh, kid okay. you he's, he is really good <laughs> so okay so you're you're a modest and a generous god then <laughs> I, I will allow you to enjoy the game while not trying <laughs> well i mean no one don't don't do what you don't enjoy that's just silly i mean if, if you if you like playing games then just spend all your money on hill <coughs> climb racing and <laughs> there you go and just, buy those gems just son do what you enjoy buy yes. those gems Make but. it rain. Buy those gems. <laughs> well, that's a little bit about uh, that game and, and working in the industry. Yeah. Appreciate that uh, that conversation. But oh, no speaking of uh, somebody brought up first-person shooters, Clowns, Assassin, one of you guys, I can't remember. Clowns, you, right? Saying Assassin's the god of first-person shooters. Speaking of first-person yeah. shooters, uh, Borderlands 2, I don't know if you guys heard this, but uh, Borderlands 2 is getting yeah, a PSVR version. A little pricey, in my opinion. We'll get into that, I'm, sh I'm sure, as people offer their opinions on this thing. $50 coming in uh, de December of this year to uh, PSVR, I think, initially, and I think um, some other platforms, Vive, Oculus, that kind of stuff, uh, later on. But VR, PSVR is what they're pushing right now. And uh, as essentially Borderlands 2 uh, adapted a little bit you know, for single-player play because you're, you're not playing this in multiplayer. It's only single-player. Um, and it's got like a new bullet time feature. It's called the uh, badass. What is it called? It's called the Banff bullet time mode. But badass, <laughs> man, I can't remember what the last two were. I'll have to look it up while we talk about this. But um, <laughs> essentially, it's a bullet time mode to give you a little more time to because Borderlands can get crazy, and you know, in VR, obviously, you can't be swinging your head and swinging your arms all over the place, um, or else you'll probably pass out or something. Um, but or get disoriented. But uh, what do you guys think about this? I mean, there's no Borderlands 3. Everyone's waiting for Borderlands 3. And now we're getting a Borderlands 2 VR at $50. Um, are you guys excited for this? Kind of thinking it's too much? Or um, wh what are your thoughts? Well, we all know they're milking the Borderlands 2 name for uh, more money. 
obviously. I mean, they, they released it so many different times. I mean, it's just like the Skyrim. We'll see it on fridges and, you know, they'll bring out a trailer for that and dishwashers. and Borderlands stuff, Alexa? So. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, what is the name of that mode? I have to look that up. Um, what mode? It's the oh, Badass Mega Fun Time. That's what it's called. Badass Mega Fun Time is the uh, is that um is that slowdown mode um, and nothing else <clears throat> right it doesn't mean anything else exactly um <laughs> so uh clowns of cheese you guys have a uh have any thoughts on this what are you are you guys excited for it what do you what are you thinking i love borderlands 2 it's my favorite first person shooter probably of all time i still play it even now even like 2 weeks ago um but i hate vr so i'm conflicted but I mean, it, I, just, I don't think there's anything wrong with bringing more experiences over to VR for people who like that. Mm -hmm. I know tons of people who enjoy uh, Elite Dangerous in VR, for example, and, and, and uh, even Fallout VR, I hear mixed things about. But, you know, some people really like, really like that. So, hey, <laughs> why not? Yeah, any space games in VR, I can get behind. I really that that's an experience I really do like. I mean, Elite Dangerous is a little too complex for my liking in terms of uh, space exploration. I mean, I think it's a great game. I have played it a little bit, but um, it's not something I'd sit down every night and play, even in VR. But um, you know, space experiences in general, I think are are very very good in VR. And first person shooters can be you know very good for VR too, but. You know, I just get I just get a little weary, and, and we're getting in the YouTube chat. People are saying, uh, Supersonic Station saying that VR is a totally different experience. It'll be worth every penny. See, I'm wondering if that totally different experience is even going to be worthwhile. Because some of these first-person shooters, like that Doom VR, uh, VFR, whatever they called it, um, you know, where the movement was kind of a little weird, you know, like the teleporting movement instead of actually walking, um, you know, some of the things I think are compromised to a point where it's, it's you, you just don't feel like it's the same game, and that's kind of where I worry with this. Because like you, Reese, um, like I, I think that uh, Borderlands Two is one of my favorite FPS games of all time, let alone like FPS RPG games, just of all of any FPS game, and played the hell out of it on Xbox 360, and then again on you know Xbox One when the Handsome Collection came out, um, but. You know, now it's like I know those games so fondly. I feel like I'm going to go into this and be like, okay, I just paid $50 and it doesn't feel the same at all. And it's, you know, a nice nod to the franchise. But, you know, I'm, I'm looking for another installment of what I'm, I love to play, not, you know, a different way of playing it that's gimped in a way, you know? Yeah, that's, you're only going to be disappointed if you go in thinking like that. I mean, oh, man, think, I of, know. Um, th think about, think about Telltale. You mentioned them before. Um, the, what was the Borderlands game for Telltale? Um, yeah. It um, was, um, Tales from the Borderlands. Tales from the Borderlands. Tales from the Borderlands. Yeah. Thank you. That was, I think, their best game. But, like, it, it was absolutely hilarious, and I, I enjoyed it from start to finish. I was, like, laughing out loud at how funny the jokes were. But it was nothing like Borderlands 1 or 2, but I still enjoyed it for what it was. Uh, if I went into it expecting it to be like Borderlands uh, one and two, I would have been obviously very disappointed. And I think mm. the problem with VR is it's so divorced from a normal game to the point where it might as well be as different as a first person shooter and a telltale game, because there are just completely different kinds of experiences, but mm. it's, it still seems familiar because you're still in first person and shooting that it, it does, it, it feels a little bit like you're diluting the game, but in reality, you're just sort of adapting it to the, uh, to the play style. I mean, like I said, I hate VR. It makes me sick as hell. But, but it's, I mean, if people have, it's, it's hard for me to sort of vocalize what I'm trying to say here, but I don't think it's inherently harmful for people to have oh, these no. experiences in no. VR. De definitely not. And speaking of that, um, you know, getting sick, Supersonic Station, the, in the YouTube chat, I know he's a, a pretty big fan of VR and, has his input on this, and he says again, you know, despite what people say, you can change the locomotion. You know, you, it doesn't have to be that teleporting that I mentioned. It can be actual, you know, movement like you're used to traditional movement. But then again, like you, like you're kind of alluding to, um, you know, it, it gets sickening. Like sometimes you just get easily disoriented, and and you know, Borderlands Two. I remember 
nights where I'll sit down at six o'clock and be like, I'm going to play this for three hours. And I look up at the clock and it's like two in the morning. You know, you get that entrenched. Is that, you know, encapsulated in that experience? And obviously VR would take that to the next level. But, you know, I feel like every time I've played a VR game where I do have, you know, open locomotion with joysticks or whatever, and I'm not looking the right way and whatever, um, it gets to a point where you just get too sick to continue, you know? Um, at least that's my experience with it. Me too. Even the simulator at work I talked about, it's uh, got three screens that sort of wrap around you, and it, it moves, like jerks you back and forth and, and moves with the telemetry. And that makes me and most people who use it quite ill after a very short amount of time, especially if you've been playing for like half an hour and then you turn around. That that makes oh, your brain yeah, just yeah, go, yeah, yeah. oh, hell no. Yeah, like yeah, at yeah. least when you've got like uh, a VR set, you can sort of like close your eyes, take it off, and your brain has a second to process that you've just taken off your VR set. But just turning around in the simulator, your brain just goes, nope, nope, nope. It, it really does make you feel ill. Yeah, and I think... I think for me specifically, and I know people in the chat are saying that, you know, VR never makes them sick. And I think a lot, I think sensitivities people amongst people, yes, yeah, it's just, yeah. it's just a, it's a mixed bag really. And I think that's why VR is still successful and games like this is still successful because if everyone got sick, it just wouldn't work yeah. out. But if everyone got uh, sick, no one would buy it, right? Like, <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. And, you know, they try their best to make the, the screens in there, you know, very high frame rate so you don't get juddering, um, you know, sickness or anything like that. But it's for me, it's more like the disorientation, and you know maybe some games are better. Somebody in the chat mentioned Farpoint on PSVR, which is one of the best PSVR games in my opinion. Um, and the movement in that I'm actually okay with for long periods of time. But then you look at another PSVR game, Rigs, which is that mech fighting, um, that mech kind of like four and four. I think it was four and four, or maybe it was three on three. Uh, it's been a while since I've played that game, but um, it's a first-person shooter where you're in mechs and, you know, you're fighting to the death, essentially. is like capture the flag kind of mode, stuff like that. Um, just the movement in that is so quick. It's like almost playing a Call of Duty game. Like, it's a Twitch shooter, if you will, in VR. Yeah. And, and Twitch shooting in VR, like, for me, uh, 30 minutes and I just got to take a breather, you know, get some fresh air. I think Mech Warrior would be fun in VR. Like yeah, I mean Riggs is kind of close. To, Riggs is kind of close to that, actually. Yeah, but but Mech Warrior is really slow and ponderous. It's not. Oh fast. yeah, true, true. Yeah, and there's and you know actually it's actually not like that at all. Now that I'm thinking about it, uh, because <laughs> Mech Warrior there's like no verticality. Where in Riggs, like there's no. a lot of verticality, like a lot of boosting up and a lot of. Um, you know, uh, like jets and stuff like that and, and ramps and all that kind of stuff where in Mech Warrior it's like very much feet on the ground kind of deal. Um, Clowns, what do you what do you think about this, man? And, you know, it's great to have options. Um, and like she said, you know, VR is, is not my thing. Uh, it's still one of my favorite first-person shooters as well. I love Borderlands 2. So, I mean, it's great for people out there that like VR. It's just another option. Um, the price point, I think, should be a little bit lower. I do, you know, it's been out for a very long time and on multiple platforms. Um, but I don't know what kind of dev work they had to put into Borderlands 2 VR. So maybe the price point justifies um, that kind of release. I'm not sure yet. But yeah, I mean, if you're a Borderlands 2 fan, you like VR, you can't go wrong with it. Yeah, I mean,. I'll, I'll probably still pick it up because, you know, I'm really thirsty for games on that platform. Um, but in general, I think that, um, you know, it's just difficult for me to play FPS games. And I hope this kind of changes my mind on that. But um, and like you said, Clouds, I think, you know, who knows when they started developing this thing and the development time. You know, when VR first came out, people thought that, that was going to take off like crazy. And granted, it's done better than I thought it was going to do. But it definitely didn't take off in the way that some of these companies wished it had. Um, it went like this, up and then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's crashed. But Exa um, that, that sort of goes along with the projections of, of new things. It'll start to creep up again as the technology improves. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, you know, and I think she's, um, she's hit the point right on the head as the technology improves because uh, shout out to Chance Glasgow who's been on the uh, podcast before he was one of the founding members of infinity ward. 
he actually said that once VR hits 90 frames per second, he could see it being mainstream for gaming. Yeah, I mean, once they can sustain that, absolutely. And and that's not something that, you know, home consoles really, you know, are that that use that kind of thing are able to do. And that's kind of like the target market at this point. You know, Xbox, Microsoft has, has talked about, you know, getting into VR in the future, and those plans look like they've been essentially scrapped because we haven't heard anything about it since. But, you know, Xbox One X probably can get, you know, close to that, you know, um, PCs these days, you see VR ready, right? But that doesn't mean you're going to get the greatest experience. And obviously, the original PlayStation 4 can do PSVR, but from all from what I've heard, it's not like exceptionally good. You know, it's it's on the blurry side. It's you know stutters here and there. And then PSVR, we've heard in the past, has been essentially a play. You know, not only to for more power, but more power for VR. You know, so um, you know. You know what's going to improve uh, VR way faster than gaming is when people start using VR for things other than games, like, for example, for business and enterprise. Like uh, our company a couple weeks ago, uh, a couple weeks, maybe about a month and a half ago, we actually sponsored this local, um, this local music video festival and everything about the music music video festival music video festival that's actually a hard thing to say was in vr so you'd go there and the people put on these vr headsets and they were inside a film clip like a music video that was fully 3d and it was like an interactive sort of film clip that's a really cool idea and you know there's so much more that you can do with vr that no one is doing stuff like that stuff like using it for business and enterprise i think microsoft is kind of interested in the um using the uh what is it the hololens the hololens yeah Yeah. Yeah. augmented for more like an augmented uh, reality instead of Virtual reality, more like... Um, exactly, exactly, yeah. I think, I think once more companies start, like, like that'll sort of help mainstream uh, acceptance of VR as well. Kind of like cell phones helped mainstream acceptance of mobile gaming and stuff like that, because everyone had one. Right. And, and people are saying in the chat that, you know, they use VR for businesses already, but you need to... I think... I think you need, like, big-time businesses to... to uh, you know, to, to adapt this and to show off using it, you know, you need yeah. like when the I big say, boys to, to, to adapt this thing. Yeah. Well, when I say using, I mean, for more than a publicity stunt or for more than a, a side toy in the office, I mean like actually using it every day. Yeah. It's part of regular protocol workflow, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Um, yeah. A couple of people are saying porn will improve VR and, uh, we've gotten a lot of accepting of that in the, uh, YouTube chat. I mean, <laughs> yes. I mean, obviously, right. This I mean, is the end game gentlemen. <laughs> am I right? Assassin? I, would not, I would not want to be a Reddit mod on that thread about VR and porn. Oh yeah. yeah. That could get, that could get ugly, but I mean, yeah, I don't know. In terms of VR for gaming, I think the, I think after using like an HTC Vive, I, I think it's definitely to a point where it's incredible enough to for people to be interested in it. It's just how many people can afford PCs to to power that kind of experience versus what you may get with PSVR. So I, I don't know. I, I think it's I think it's smart to make VR stuff still, even though it hasn't been adapted as well. But um, at the same time, you know, in this specific case, I really would rather have a Borderlands 3 100, you know, 10 times out of 10. Um, but cat. Assassin's cat's tail is in his webcam. <laughs> is that the tail? What is that right now? That is the tail, right? Tail. Nice. Show us the cat. Pick the cat up. Show us the damn Introduce cat. Introduce her. This is yeah, relevant to my cat. interests. Show us the cat. Yes. Oh, dude, this cat is looking better and better every Aww. day. Like, honestly. What a sweetie. She's not happy with that, but still. Yeah, don't. she's like, get out of here. <laughs> Let me get out of here. <laughs> All right, so I think that's essentially it on uh, on Borderlands VR. If you guys are planning on picking that up, please, you know, hit us up on Twitter or in the comments here and, and um, you know, let us know what you guys think. And, uh, you know, when the game comes out, I'm sure we'll talk about it again because um, I'm going to be getting it for sure. And, um, you know, maybe we'll bring somebody on that does have it and we'll talk about that a little bit more, but that's a couple of months from now. So in the interim, we'll just, uh, hope to see some trailers and some more information on it. But, um, 
yeah, let us know what you guys think of the game in general and the price. I think those are pretty much the contentious things right now. But anyway, taking a little bit of a turn. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's continue with some PlayStation stuff because there's been a lot of PlayStation stuff um, that's been going on past week or so. Um, you know, obviously, there's been rumors about the PlayStation 5 since, you know, uh, <laughs> the launch of the Xbox One X really, I think, is when it really started taking off uh, with with a lot of rumors and and he said she said on on certain specs and and when it's going to come out and all this kind of stuff. But um, we've gotten some, we've gotten a couple things here, and and all of them are up for play. So wherever people want to take it here, you know, take it. Uh, but essentially, we've gotten Sony's CEO saying that you know it's obviously happening. They're working on it right now. That there is the successor to the PlayStation. He didn't say PlayStation Five, but uh, the successor is coming, which I think is our obvious um we've gotten in in the same regard we've gotten an infinity ward a product listing or job listing i should say that uh at, looks for people to work on a next gen game which obviously uh we're in current gen now you wouldn't call this gen next gen so um that gives some validity to uh playstation 5 potentially coming next year because um you know obviously infinity ward is going to be the next call of duty maker so to 2019 that will be an infinity ward call of duty and uh there's been some talk about backwards compatibility on the playstation 5 is there going to be backwards compatibility is there not um some patents have suggested that uh, there's going to be system level upgrading of current games to uh as they call remastering by emulation that will be a main feature of the PlayStation 5 for current gen games. Um, so, there's been a lot of news out there. I don't know what you guys want to hit on first because it's just been a ton of stuff going on. Also, name changing is coming to PlayStation finally. I feel like that's not even a point of contention because uh, we've had that forever. I mean, that should have been right from the get go, but I guess finally it's here. But oh, hold on, hold on. This name change thing, yeah, it's it's what people wanted, but it. They're not delivering it that way because it breaks some of your older games and games before what, April 2018. So, like, you change your name, you're going to lose your trophies and saves on a lot of this older stuff. And then you have to revert your name back to pick up those saves. And if you change it back again, you're going to lose those saves. So I don't I don't think they thought with this in mind uh, because their whole architecture uh, is not ready for it. Yeah, it's almost like they it's almost like they address this need because everyone was complaining about it, but they didn't think back enough to to think about that kind of stuff. And you know, who knows how many people are uh, you know, really caring about that. You know, I know you I know you care really deeply about it, but like a lot of people probably at this point are are dismissing that like i've seen a lot of that on twitter and on youtube of people being like well who cares about the games in the past like i just want to you know i don't want to be like baby monkey face 27 anymore like i've, I've grown up <laughs> you know what i mean that kind of stuff well, they they say that now right but then when they go back and change their name they can't unlink um, their account from the vita so i don't know if that's going to affect anything you can't put a new account on the vita unless you reformat it and then also you're going to lose all your trophies that you earn like on ps3 and the vita so think about that for a minute yeah that's pretty major for people um yeah. from back in the day like that that is that is pretty major i agree with you on that clowns i'm not you know definitely yeah. not dismissing that as a big point but i think there are a lot of people out there that are kind of like i'd rather have my name change than care about you know trophies and games that no one even cares about anymore you know or not a lot of people care about you know um but what do you guys think? Is it, what's more important to you? Would it be, uh, you know, Assassin and uh, Angel's Cheese, you guys think that, um, you know, would you rather, like, change a name if it was bad, or would you rather keep those trophies? Ugh, well, for me, when I buy into an ecosystem, I sort of, that's the reason I'm mostly an Xbox gamer uh, when it comes to consoles, is because everything carries over from the Xbox 360, the Xbox One, Xbox One X, even PC now has my my achievements and gamer score and it, it it feels cozy you know i mean but this is this is something that sony absolutely messed up on and had like their intern program their database uh <laughs> structure <laughs> by having the, the user the username actually be the unique identifier registered inside the database that's so so bad um i'm also what i'm curious about though is why they don't just do like a surface level thing like on steam 
where you just change your yeah. name and it's just like a display name and you can also change your friends names you can you know i i could you know change you know clowns to tim if i felt like it you know it's just it, but i only see that on my end i don't know why they don't do that i'm, I'm guessing there's something stopping them because it's not like they're you know totally inept um and well except when they do things like what they did right. <laughs> but that was you know 50, that was 15 years ago they, i think they just were being stubborn and and didn't really imagine that it would be a, a deal until yeah. microsoft made it a big deal right and they were forced to respond and honestly yeah, I, th it's... I think it i think they do uh, you know they have things like display real name you know like you can yeah yeah, yeah uh, exactly so i i feel like if they have that why can't they do something like what you're suggesting that that's what i'd do i mean i'm not in charge of sony but that's what i'd be like make this happen um but yeah for me i would actually not if if changing my name meant losing access to old saves which is very important to me uh old old trophies just old anything really if if i had to change my name to take like that's not a hit worth taking like my my old data is is valuable and uh, why not just make a new account right yeah just make a new account for you know the the later games that it, you like yeah, for it's, it's, uh, you know multiplayer like the same or whatever thing it, it's not any different if you lose access to all your old stuff you've made a new account it's just a new account with a fancy name <laughs> right right yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. And I think, you know, obviously this this applies to multiplayer gamers only. Like if you're a single player gamer, you don't get, you know, you don't care about this anyway. Um at least not your name, no. Right. And you know, you some people so. some people are multiplayer gamers, they only play multi, you know, a couple multiplayer games competitively and at that point like, you know, who cares? Like oh. it, you know, uh, I think, see, when I think about stuff like this, I think about guys like Assassin who work really hard for achievements, like the Ma Mao High Club. You know, if he was oh, to change, let's say on PSN, he would lose his Mao High Club if, he, if he'd gotten <laughs> it on Call of Duty. It'd be gone. I think if, if this isn't as, I didn't know about this, that it would remove your trophies. So if this. Only if for this certain games, go, though. Only for certain like, games. Okay, okay. Well, if this is like going wide right now, I'm surprised that I haven't heard like. I saw a single unified scream of agony from the entire user base of truetrophies.com because those guys really care about trophies. Yeah, well, <laughs> because because the thing is, is that and that which is another weird thing about what Sony's doing here is they they're saying this is in beta, you know, until early 2019. This isn't going to be available to everyone until early 2019. They're kind of running with this beta terminology for the next three months, and it's kind of like, oh well, they'll fix that. You know, that's what I've heard from a lot of people. Oh, well, they're saying that now. Uh, but you know they'll fix that that'll be fixed by the time it goes live or whatever so it's getting downplayed in that regard you know just like back in the day when uh pubg was in beta right and everyone was like oh you know pubg sucks right now but you know they'll fix that when that's out of beta it's just in beta you know you hear that all the time um but you know you're right people should be people should be upset about about something like that if it would happen at every ps3 game i would say it is like too big of a deal to change my name um, I mean, that'd be different, of course, if like you were a younger kid when you got your PlayStation ID and you were like thinking something was cool and then, you know, you're an adult and obviously you don't want to be known as, you know, ZPCI assassin, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> he, he doesn't even say anything. Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> um, assassin, last word on this. What do you think? I think it's stupid that they would remove, uh, the, the trophy thing, like. Um, like if you did so much work, you know you, you don't get any of that credit. Like if Microsoft did this, they removed what like sixty thousand gamer score for me that one time, and like I was so pissed. Yeah, you're still butthurt about that even to this day. I, even though you I got am back. because like it's still kind of broken away because like most people like I can't even like compare games with them because like they removed that after they removed the the gamer score. It's a, it's stupid. Like, it's the I mean, it's the my, infrastructure. I mean, it's it's the infrastructure too. It's like you know, it's it's based in a way that they can, you know, what can they do on it, right, clowns? Isn't that the situation? Is he yeah, here? I mean, it's oh, okay. legacy legacy architecture. So, I mean, there's not much they can do. A cosmetic change, like she's mentioned, would be a better option. But I don't know if they could cosmetically change on the older. 
uh, database, like the older tables for the older games. Right. I would guess that it's like the uh, what people have done is have it pull the tables for the leaderboards and for the trophies and stuff in game like directly from your gamer tag like the the game probably just pings sony and says who is this and sony says it's you know inferno 217 and sony goes okay and sticks it in the game so it's uh, that's probably why it breaks old games because it's got this old information that it just asked directly off the server right yep yep that's a I shame guess. that that's a shame if that if this is if that's going to if that's going to exist for the entirety of the PlayStation Network uh, existence, then I, that's that's a that's a real shame because, you know, Microsoft, you know, you make fun of it all you want about paying ten dollars to change a name. They make a ton of money on that. I I know people who've changed their name like six or seven times without even thinking about it. And I'm like, dude, you realize that over the past couple of years you spent seventy dollars just to change your name, right? And and people say that that's worth it. You know, there are people out there. There's a huge contingency of people. That, that want to just change their name all the time, whether it's, you know, some people will make a name that's relevant now, but, you know, maybe something dies out, you know, a different inside joke or whatever, and they change it to something else, you know? Um, like, Steam does it so well, like you were mentioning. It's, you know, you should be able to freely do that, you know, and if you have a group of friends where you have an inside joke, you know, just change it to that, you know? Um, like, actually, you're probably not going to get this, but for people in the U.S., uh, my steam name was judge Mathis for a while. <laughs> like, I think it still actually officially is judge Mathis, but I have like an alias or whatever. Uh, assassin, you're know. laughing. You know what judge Mathis is, I? right? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's just, <laughs> okay. Ju- judge. Ma- so judge <laughs> Mathis is judge Mathis is a, uh, TV like daytime TV, uh, judge. That essentially, like, yeah, like Judge Judy, like Judge Judy, exactly, yeah. So you, I know Judge Judy, you know Judge Judy, yeah. So yeah, Judge Mathis was my, uh, was my tag. I think it still is actually, and uh, you know that was obviously an inside joke, and I was able to change it, you know, with an alias or whatever. But if I'm on PlayStation Network, like you know, Judge Mathis really isn't too much of a thing anymore, and you know, or not as funny Judge anymore. Judge Mathis now, Judge Mathis forever. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys changed your uh gamer tag ever um uh, yes i have yeah clowns has assassin of you yeah i uh i changed it uh, way back when black ops uh, one was relevant oh okay okay yeah see exactly so you're exactly what i'm talking about like you know sometimes i've done it twice yeah see so uh you know people do that uh, I, I used to just share an account with my brother and then, you know, when I got my own name, I changed it. So technically I guess I have changed it when it comes to, you know, friends that know me and stuff, but I just started a new account because, uh, you know, I just bought my own live and all that kind of stuff. So, mm-hmm. um, I know a person who, when he gets drunk, he sometimes changes his name. I think he's changed it like 10 times. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> showstopper in the youtube chat that's, says he has I, I bet you a lot of people in the chat have expensive habit <laughs> yeah that's an expen- that's an expensive drunken uh drunken tendency you know i know a lot of drunks that will like pop on amazon and buy a ton of shit on amazon prime and the but you know changing your name that many <laughs> that, times shit that is that is so common at our our office especially like the <laughs> the, the management will like just like forget what they've ordered to the office and stuff just arrives and it's like who ordered all of this lego (laughs) (laughs) that's great that's great um all right so some of the other news that's kind of uh you know floating around out there it's kind of you can all you can really bunch it all into one i mean obviously we we already mentioned at the beginning of this topic that uh the ceo of sony has confirmed that there's a playstation 5 but do we believe on this panel the PlayStation 5 is coming in 2019, like some of the other rumors and, and hints and link and leaks of, uh, you know, Infinity Ward has a job listing for a next COD game being maybe the next COD game. See, they don't even say it's the next COD game, but everyone's kind of assuming it is because they're, they're coming up next. You know, it's right now it's uh, Treyarch, but next is, is Infinity Ward. So when they say that they are looking for people to work on a next gen game, they're kind of just saying, oh, wow, that kind of proves that 2019 is the year it's going to happen. And, uh, you know, there's been such a, such a boom in technology, man, in terms of graphics power and even, even uh, computational CPU power. It's just, 
it's just gone leaps and bounds since 2013 or even since 2016 when the PS4 Pro came. Uh, we're at a point where people are thinking maybe it's time for a new console that may be backwards compatible like they've patented recently. Do you guys think that it is time or what, do you, what are your feelings on this? Well, with Holiday Call of Duty. 2020, quote me. 2020, all right. Sasson, what do you think? Well, with Call of Duty, I mean, a lot of these developers, like I, I've seen Treyarch, I, I believe in... I think it was uh, Infinite Warfare's credits. Like, so these companies do help each other, you know, making Call of Duty games. So, I mean, Tr- Infinity Ward could be, you know, making help, tr- you know, Treyarch if, you know, the PS5 launches the Treyarch game. Like, they can be helping, you know, like they, certain devs maybe from Infinity Ward be learning of how to make PS5 games, and then they're going to be like, let's go to Treyarch to, because they're going to be launching with it, you know, or the other way, you know, maybe they're you know, going to have it come out in 2019. Right. I mean, it doesn't. It, I mean, it doesn't say in that listing anywhere that it's absolutely the next COD game. Like, it doesn't say COD 2019. Come work on this for next gen. Like, it it, do, it definitely doesn't say that. Um. So, oh, yeah. uh, you Speaking know, people. Of someone in the industry. Oh, sorry. Oh no. Go ahead. No, lag. please. I'm just. I'm just. <laughs> I'm. I'm bantering. Go ahead. No, no, it was, sorry, the lag, I thought you'd finished. Speaking of someone in the industry, uh, they just hire ahead of time. It takes more than a year to make these games. Um, I'm sure this listing is just for their next future games because they, they have to learn the machine, figure out how to make it, plan the game, make the game, test the game, get it ready. Uh, so I, I, I would say that there's not really a lot of weight behind the fact that they've hired someone this year to release a next-gen game and that and the, the, the next gen game would come out next year. I would mm-hmm. say they're just hiring for their future. Companies don't generally tend to hire people on the spot for a thing that they need right now. So I was perusing Reddit on that exact argument. And I agree with that, by the way. I'm not, you know, I'm just going to play devil's advocate right now because I was perusing, for it. I was perusing Reddit a little bit on this topic. And somebody was saying, oh, well, um, you know, at the beginning of the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 generation, this current generation we're in, uh, all the games were essentially cross-platform, right? Or not cross-platform, but, you know, cross-generation, right? You got a game that came out, like Destiny came out, Battlefield 4 came out, like yeah. a lot of these games that came out from the get-go were, uh, you know, on Xbox 360 and play- and um, Xbox One or PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4. Um, and people argued that that kind of hampered the games because, in honesty, uh, you know, they're probably developing that for the most time uh for the for the lower system and they just you know bumped it up because the spec bump to the newer to the newer system you know you didn't really get to see you know the god of wars of the world the last of us twos the you know shadow of the tomb raider the forza horizon 4 you don't get to see that kind of dedication to upgraded power if you're spending a majority of the time developing for the lower for the older you know current gen at that time right um so what do you think about that? Like that, you know, maybe they have been working on this game for the past three years or whatever for PS4, but, you know, they need a year to port it to PS5. You know, maybe that's the case. That is possible. Um, definitely the first COD game will more than likely be on both uh, both generations. But I actually, I, I'm strongly in camp uh, where I believe that, that uh, Sony and, and Microsoft are going to go the way of mobile and continuously release new hardware that's built on the same platform and everything will be forward and backwards compatible like a, like a cell phone. So the, the next box and the PS5 will play PS4 and Xbox One games and mm-hmm. games will be cross-generational. Uh, and they pr- probably they'll have to at some point come with a little sticker on the box that says this game will only work with ps4 and above like they do on the phones but i'm pretty sure that's where they want to go and i mean old men like us are the only ones who are used to generations uh young people have no concept of console generations anymore they've grown up with cell phones they don't understand why the old stuff doesn't work on the new thing uh that's just a really old-fashioned way of doing business and i don't think they're going to keep that up right I I tend to agree with you on that. I mean, I think the the writing's on the wall there, and we're gonna get into the Project X Cloud in just a minute here. But um, I mean, I think that's kind of a 
kind of indication that that's the situation still, even, you know, with the, you know, obviously they're not going to go from, you know, in the home hardware to right to cloud and just right like that, the cold Turkey. So, no, um, no, no. but you know, it's good. It, it, it is, it is trending towards, uh, you know, no generations anymore. I think even Phil Spencer has spoken on that fact that it's going to, it's yeah. going to get to that point sooner rather than later. And obviously with the Xbox ecosystem, including windows 10, you know, including all the Xbox consoles and, you know, even they, even sometimes they refer to, to the Xbox app as part of the Xbox ecosystem, you know, it, it's obviously, it's obvious that they're preparing for the future, like you just said. So, yeah. um, Clowns, what do you got on this? I know you're pretty, uh, you're pretty opinionated on this kind of thing. Yeah, you know, I, I'm still gonna say that I'm gonna stick with my original prediction on Four Gods of Quarters that I did like what two years ago. I predicted that the out late 2019, like maybe between a September and December release, um, and then when I was on a crossfire they doubted that and asked me to come up with a second opinion. Uh, if anything, then at that point would be an announcement between September to December. But I really think that tech is moving so fast that they can do this. Um, and also if they were to make, let's say PS five backwards compatible and they release it before Microsoft gets the chance to release the next Xbox. Sony wants to beat them to the punch. They want to be the first ones out there. They want the press. Um, and that's, that's what, they really care about the marketing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I remember the days of, of console wars, if you will, when you know the consoles were inherently very different. Um, obviously, you know the SNES and the the Sega Genesis uh, weren't the same console, just with different ecosystems, like it is today. Where you know, obviously, the Xbox One X is a little, you know, is stronger than the PS4 Pro, so you do see disparages and uh, discrepancies in the uh, in the performance of those two machines on same games. But when it comes down to it, like there isn't an FX chip, or there isn't like this secret sauce that makes one aspect like superiorly different, like audio or uh, you know multiple more colors in the screen and all that kind of stuff. Right? It's like the same stuff. It's the same processor, essentially, essentially, essentially the same GPU, but uh, with a few more teraflops of power on on the Xbox One side. And you know, it's not like I I, I strongly don't think that when the PS five and Xbox two, whatever you want to call it comes out, like there's going to be a huge difference in the hardware. You know, I think the hardware is going to be extremely similar and built on the same kind of architecture. It's not like going to be vastly different like we've seen in the past. So it's like, it's like the, these systems are, it's beating to the punch. The point is what I'm trying to make is that beating to the punch, I think is going to be hugely important. And everyone's, I've seen a lot of people on, on Twitter being like, oh, well, if the games aren't there, then Microsoft should just wait and not release it. You know, obviously they just picked up a bunch of studios and they might not have the games 100% ready to, to come out of the gate at the same time and whatever. But, you know, I think that if they release later, if, if you're right and that late 2019 is the PS5 release date and Xbox doesn't release theirs until late 2020 or what have you, I think it's like, I think that's kind of suicide, honestly. Sony is anything if not pragmatic. Um, they're a very business-focused company, and they always play the long game. Their release is always terrible. Uh, their release lineup, I should say. Look at the PS4. Do you, do you guys remember the original jokes? The PS4, they were calling it the Indie Station. Indie Station, oh like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because it had no games. The, the Xbox One had way better games at the beginning of the generation, but then the, uh, Microsoft stopped producing quality exclusives, and Sony, as they always do, doubled down throughout the, the, the rest of the generation and kept producing more and more games. And it works. It's worked for the PS3, and it worked for the PS4, and they are not going to... <clears throat> change what has worked twice in a row uh they like i said they're anything if not pragmatic so i do agree with you that they will want to be first to market but not because of any exclusive games they just want to be first to market to give their developers more time to program for them and 
to get ahead of Microsoft. I mean, Nintendo, they don't compete with with Sony and and uh, and play, uh, Xbox in the same right. the same way. And and they're a very very old fashioned company. I think of them more of as a toy company than a, a, a right, really exactly. serious games company. Yeah. Uh, except their mobile games division. Their mobile games division is a powerhouse. Uh, they they make a ton of money. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love Nintendo. That's it's probably my favorite console this generation. Actually, don't mm-hmm. tell anyone I said that. But uh, they, they, their console shipped with must-have exclusives, and everyone bought it. Um, so it can work for you like that. Um, but when it comes to the new hotness of the PlayStation and the Xbox, people are just going to buy what they can get as soon as they can get it. So right. Exactly. I can definitely see why first. First past the post is important. Yeah, and especially 100%. when when Microsoft's playing catch up in a big way now. Um, yeah, you know it's it's it, it almost motivates them to get out the door, even if they don't have you know those six studios or whatever. Um, you know, have if they don't have a game each, like I don't think that's a big deal. They just need to get out there at the same time, if not sooner, in order to make a comeback I mean, here. Multi-platform games are the ones that sell, like. They're the ones that sell, but they're the they're yeah. the ones that people forget about all of a sudden that yeah, exist exactly. on both. But you know that that that's the thing, right? Like, so launching with a bunch of multi plats is not a bad thing because everyone is like just wants to play their the newest Call of Duty or whatever. You know, that's the average person, and and I, even myself, it's like, yeah, sure, sign me up to my to Borderlands Three with better graphics. I don't I don't care if it's on, if it's if it's on the PS Five and it's it's got better graphics. I want it, uh, but it's the, the exclusive sort of add add value to the the console itself so it's a it's a different kind of thing who who in the who has ever played a console launch exclusive that was good except uh, breath of the wild in, in recent mm. memory at least i i can't think of any not not in recent memory i mean assassin used to always and don't even deny this assassin assassin used to like get a hard on for rezo gun on the playstation oh my 4 God, that- Rezo gun. Ah, so yeah, qual- quality finished developer. <laughs> wow. quality. Remember that assassin? Oh my god, I missed that game. I was looking at the PlayStation Store and it showed up. I'm like, I want. Housemark, it. Housemark have some really nice games. They're making a battle royale game now, though. Of course, mm. of course, gotta get on that train, <laughs> right? Um, well, I mean, uh, I've actually spoken to the guys from Housemark about it, and they're. They're they're really confident about this. Like they're they're like no no this is good. Trust us, it's good. It's good enough to stand up on its own. And I mean, Housemark have never made a bad game, so. Well, it's got to be to penetrate that market, right? Yeah. So if anyone's curious and a bit doubtful, these guys are super confident. I mean, they're betting their company on it. So yeah. Oh wow. That's yeah, that's tough too. That's tough to put all yeah. your eggs in the basket and. Especially in a tough in a tough genre like that to make a real splash, but um, mm-hmm. I hope but, they go multi platform. I don't know if they. Oh, are, absolutely they need to. That, that'll help them sell more consoles. Oh, I mean, out. Remedy, another amazing Finnish development company, really repping the hometown today. <laughs> there you uh, go. Re- Re- Remedy, they've gone multi platform, and I think that's great because one, more people need to play Remedy games, and two, they're going to make more money, mm-hmm. and therefore they can make more Remedy games, which is mm-hmm. just amazing. In the Sorry, YouTube, I took us on a tangent. Then. No, no, no problem, no problem. <laughs> YouTube chat's loving it. Um, we're getting some responses. Uh, Xbox four four eight says Xbox three hundred and sixty had a great launch lineup, in my opinion. Um, oh. And then uh, the Jizzle in the YouTube chat says Cameo, which also is uh, mm-hmm. you know part of the three hundred and sixty launch lineup. So kind of on the same train there. Yeah, I mean, it's all right. I mean, I I love Rare. I've actually been to Rare Studios. Um, I have. Friends Jealous. who work there. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. It's oh, I could talk about rare studios for hours. Um, like you can't really see it, but my house is full of rare uh memorabilia. I don't have any at hand anymore. But anyway, uh, I'm a huge rare fanboy. And cameo is all right. Uh, some people really like it, but I think I think it's just all right. I mean, it's not breath of the wild, like oh no, no, crap. definitely not rap. Like, this is amazing. I mean, technically, Breath of the Wild is not an exclusive. It's also on the Wii U. So right. it also kind of defeats my my argument quite a bit there. <laughs> well, you just defeated yourself. Congratulations. I did, yeah. Well, I mean, it's true. But at the same time, who thinks of, Wii, who thinks of Breath of the Wild and thinks of the Wii U? No, no, who, definitely not. Who, who thinks of the Wii U? 
who thinks of the Wii U in Man, general? I, yeah, right? I loved that console. <laughs> I loved it. It had Clowns. amazing games. It was such a good console, and I'm so sad that it failed. But oh, then again, reporting all of its best games to the Switch. So <laughs> Clowns absolutely loved the Wii U. Ah, oh, my man. Yeah, you know, I don't know how I did this, uh, cheese, wink, wink, but I was able to He doesn't play know how some, he did that. Yeah, right. Here we go. Some, uh, <laughs> uh, GameCube games on the uh, Wii U. Oh, you just accidentally got that to work somehow. Mm, nice. Somehow. Some, I guess some <laughs> random, you know, I guess he did the Konami code and it just worked, right? Jeez. Games are good back have, then, have, you huh? done, have you done the Konami code in Borderlands 2? I don't think in I the have. Main menu? Uh, I don't think I have. What does that do? It uh, it makes a noise, and then if you go into the main menu, there's another as a new option unlocked, which allows you to select if you want extra wubs, and uh, you can turn that on and off. It, uh, it does nothing. Dude, assassin over there grinning. He wants some extra wubs. <laughs> I can already tell. <laughs> I can already tell. <laughs> fun fun little random gamer fact. But yeah, so if you need extra wubs in your your Borderlands, do the Konami code. If you don't know what the Konami code is, just go. Just just leave. We're gonna right. have to play that game again. Now we we had so much Borderlands talk. I got to go back to Borderlands too. You know, Great I never game. even beat one. Oh man! Oh, uh, the first Where one's not nearly as the first one's not nearly as good as two, though. Ooh, honestly, that's gonna make a lot of people angry. You say that. That's fine. I know a lot of people in the chat right now that don't agree with me on that, but the Borderlands two for life, of, man. What do you think of a pre sequel? Pre sequels, all right. Clowns love pre sequel, mm. but. Oh, I've, 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 to be honest with you, Cheese, it took me about four hours of playing it before I actually started liking it. Mm -hmm. I had to get yeah, the really humor in it, the Australian humor. Uh, yeah, but once I got it, man, yeah, it, I loved it. Yep, here we go. The, here it is in the chat. Jizzle says, first one was excellent. Well, maybe, Jizzle, I know for a fact you should probably try to play Borderlands 2 before you uh, argue that one because Borderlands 2 is superior. Yeah, he says, all right. He says he can't play. He hasn't played it. All right. Um, <laughs> Borderlands 2's DLC is definitely superior. Oh, I actually my have a, a, a limited run uh, print. There was 250 made, and I've got like 119, I think. Uh, oh, no this kidding. Big poster. Uh, that I got from uh, Gearbox. This isn't a humble brag, by the way. This is straight up brag. I've got this and you don't. Uh, <laughs> nice. It's, it's Whatever. Like, we allow uh, it. We allow it. It's it's the it's it's uh, like a, a a hand. Well, not obviously hand drawn. It's a print, but it's like this sort of horror, old school horror style print of uh, Doctor uh, Doctor Ned's DLC for the first Borderlands, mm. the Halloween themed. Yep. And it's like this sort of he's there and there's all these zombies behind him, like Night of the Living dead style and it's uh, signed and numbered and it's in my it's in my bedroom it's 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 nice that's cool that's cool yeah. i love that limited Sorry, run i had to just flex on everyone right yeah pl oh that's please do <laughs> please do i do that every once in a while i do that every once in a while to assassin i'll just like bring in this forza trophy right here and show it to assassin and, oh uh, I, don't, I don't got that and uh he'll get, he'll get jealous every once in a while uh, how'd you get that that was uh from e3 they had the uh the fastest lap competition at e3 uh, oh. That was in. This was the 2016 one. I'm gonna complain to Karina. So. I haven't been given a. Where, where's my trophy? trophy. <laughs> right. Um, oh. What's the started. point of What's the point of being friends with someone who works at Playground if you don't have a Forza trophy? Ooh, oh, putting the, putting the pressure on Karina. Jeez. Yeah. We'll have to hear, hear her rebuttal on that. Karina, please. <laughs> you got a signed picture of uh, uh, Moxie from Borderlands 2. From the uh, voice actors. Oh, that's pretty good. That's that's what my that idea. is cool. That's yeah, better than mine. That is Went cool. to an anime convention because uh, she does anime voices as well. I think ah. her name's Brianna Valencia. You, you so, are a gentleman of culture, then. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's true. That's yeah, true. love it, man. Um, Fastback <laughs> wants to know, Cheese, what do you think Rare is working on besides Battletoads, New IP, or Perfect Dark? No idea. That means he does know and cannot say. So take that, take that for what it's worth. Um, yeah, I, man, <coughs> I, I can't wait. I can't wait for a new. You know, honestly, I just love Rare to revisit some old IPs. Really, I mean, Sea of Thieves was fun. You know, I enjoy that every once in a while. But I'm ready for them to go back to an old IP and freshen it up. Obviously, yeah. like people are nostalgic as hell these days, and um, 
you know, they've got some IPs that obviously they released Rare Replay and that did decently well and people were nostalgic for that as hell. Just take some of those franchises, bring them back, and obviously they can't do 007 um, GoldenEye, but... They wanted know. to. Huh? Nintendo oh, they no. wanted to, they wanted yeah. To. yeah, yeah. Said no. can, I, can I tangent us? You're talking about Rare Replay and Rare. And I, I mentioned I've actually been to their studio and uh, something that's really cool, uh, if you guys have played Rare Replay, anyone listening as well, uh, when you when you go into the menu, uh, it's got all the games, and they're they've got these the games are presented like uh, an art gallery, and they've got these big golden frames, and they're it's like the, the original box art, and you you scroll through the framed paintings, and you choose the game. Well, those just aren't key art that they created for the game. As you walk down the halls in their in their office, well, calling it an office is a bit weird because they actually are out in a farm in the middle of nowhere. I had to take a train for an hour and a half from London to this tiny little village. And then a taxi came and got me and took me 45 minutes out to a farm. There's <laughs> sheep and, and ducks and, and a pond and it's, it's a farm and they've got all these buildings on there and they just hang out away from it. But anyway, walking down the whole corridors on the walls, are these actual images that they have of every single game that they've made with huge original printings and these big gilded frames that are the exact ones that they've put into Rare Replay. So there's a little bit of a trivia for you. That's awesome. I, I saw them right away and I was like, that's from the game! And they're like, no, in the game it's from here. And it's like, oh, oh yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, and they've got that's cool. a real killer instinct uh, OG uh, arcade machine. Which is oh amazing. man, I'd love to play that. Oh man! See, I gotta get out to Rare at some point. I gotta get, I gotta if get you, Ross to give me the hookup. Ever get the chance? Absolutely go. Gonna get Ross to give me the hookup. I know he's a sweet talker, so he can he can get me in there, no <laughs> doubt. It's that it's that sort of uh, bassy uh, Scottish yes. Uh, baritone. Yes, yes. We uh, when we had him on last week, we had uh, a few women in the uh, in the chat, and one of them was. Saying, "Oh, who is this new guy? Ooh, <laughs> love that accent. He's yes, from please. Scotland, <laughs> love it. <laughs> um, he was uh, Aaron Greenberg's message tone for a while. No way, really. Yeah, we had That's Aaron funny. on the podcast once, and Aaron, right. Aaron loved it so much. He was like, dude, can you just say uh, like Aaron Greenberg and, and and a couple of other things?' And he just recorded, it and that was his. <laughs> like, if you called Aaron and got put on hold, that was." Aaron Greenberg. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, I don't know if I'm suppo- I don't know if I was allowed to tell that story. Yeah, maybe not, but it's, <laughs> it's out there now. It's out there. It's now. Uh, it's now permanently on the internet. So, mm-hmm. um, all right, let's move on. Let's let's talk. We kind of talked a little bit about this uh, during that last topic, but obviously, uh, this this news has been talked about to death. I feel, but not by any of us. So. We'll, uh, we'll go for it. Uh, so Microsoft obviously talked about uh, the cloud future uh, prior to this official revealing of this Project X Cloud. Obviously, everyone knew that the future was going to be some sort of cloud platform. And, uh, you know, Microsoft obviously at the head of cloud infrastructures with the Azure servers and or Azure, Azure, I can't, you know, I say it one Azure. way and somebody and some and somebody will say it a different way. Um Actually, in, in British English, it's Azure. Azure, yeah, I've heard that <laughs> but, too. But in, in, in America, it's Azure. Azure, right, so Azure. Right? That, that's my American accent. There you go. That's That was actually pretty good. That was actually pretty good. Um, but nonetheless, so obviously Microsoft has uh, quite the experience with cloud infrastructures. And lately we've been seeing... Uh, you know, Project Stream on Google, which Clowns can talk about a little bit because uh, he's a part of that beta of uh, of of playing Assassin's Creed through your browser, and um, that that's turned out to be pretty good. And Microsoft's looking to test out this Project X Cloud, where you can stream console quality, you know, Xbox One quality games to a bunch of devices, not only to mobile, but you know, PC to other consoles. Potentially we've heard rumors of maybe the switch getting on board with it, which would be totally meta. But, um, 
what do you guys think about this? I mean, obviously, a lot of people are reluctant to potentially a, a cloud gaming future, and we've talked about how that's not going to be, you know, cold turkey, a switch, but it's going to be kind of an offered thing that maybe you can plug a, you know, an HDMI stick into the side of your bedroom TV and 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 game on, you know what I mean? Um, or, you know, in a long car ride, if you're in the back or whatever on a train or something like that subway and you, you got high quality 4g in your area or even 5g in a couple of years um next you know, year in finland next year in finland next year in portugal too and, and actually next year in the u.s in some markets uh so a oh. few text mark test markets actually it may be later this year as a matter of fact um i was reading but um, very limited, very, very limited, but, uh, the, there is testing and, you know, the bandwidth is going to be fast enough to support this kind of stuff. And, um, like are you guys on board with it. I know, obviously you, you, you're, you have a mobile, mobile gaming background. So obviously you're into mobile gaming in some capacity, but what about mobile gaming console games on your mobile? Like there's a lot more complexity there. Sometimes, sometimes c touch controls are tough. You don't want to necessarily carry around like a Bluetooth controller or attachment of, of any kind. Um, but w what are your thoughts on this? Okay. So this is a really complex issue. Um, so on, on a surface level, yes, options are always good. Um, the thing is, as you mentioned, the biggest deal, like the biggest difference, the switch runs on mobile architecture. The biggest difference between a mobile device and a console these days is the input, the controls. And the most popular mobile games in the world, like for example, Clash Royale, are designed with the, you holding the mobile phone in mind the controls are designed with your finger and the way you hold the control and the gameplay itself is designed so that you can sit on the bus and have fun in five minutes or you can you know do it while you're on the toilet you know you can't you can't sit on the bus and play well i guess you can sit on the bus and play Zel uh, skyrim because it's on everything but you know it, it's not the game itself is not designed for that environment and and as you mentioned the controls are just way too complex so the only way you can do it is to strip the game down so that it works and no one likes a stripped down experience people like experiences that have been designed with the system in mind it feels good you can you can tell when something has been stripped down and it doesn't feel good uh so that is always going to be a big issue and i think the only way that's ever going to be solved is with a, a console controller or some kind of peripheral i saw on Microsoft's official uh, announcement, they had that little doodad with the, the controller and the phone like, sort of like plugged into it. Yep, yep. That's Stuff like that. Here. Stuff like that is basically the only way that this is going to work well. Uh, and if that's too much of an obstacle for the average person, it's going to be a real issue. But I think the real value will, from this, like you mentioned, will come from plugging it into your TV, plugging it into your, like propping up your iPad or whatever and, and using the game like that. That is where the real value is going to come from. And, you know, where there's a market, uh, especially when it comes to American tech companies, there will be someone willing to serve that market. So you, you bet your ass that there is going to be all these different peripherals that clip onto the outside of your phone so that you can play them like a Switch, for example, or or your iPad or whatever. Like that's that's instant business if this takes off. So it's complicated, but on the surface, yeah, it's a great idea. I think, uh, especially in a place like Finland, where I live, where we, I have like 150 megabit down on my, my cell phone and uh, Jeez. 5G is only going to make it better. Yeah, but no kidding. in places like the States where you guys are like, it's really slow to upgrade the huge infrastructure you have. We're a small country up here. Uh, so it's, it's no, never going to be as, uh, good an experience for for you guys as it is for me, unfortunately. So it's it's going to take some time to do well, but it is going to be the future. I think. I don't think that. Uh, I think like wired stuff is just on the way out in every aspect, not mm -hmm. just in gaming, but in everything. I mean, Apple's already like, no, nope, no wires for the for the iPods, and and so it's the wires are not trendy anymore. Right. I mean, yeah. Uh if you look at the cell phone industry, right? No more headphone jacks on pretty much any phones these days. Um, but nonetheless, I think I think you make a good point with the infrastructure change because there's a little bit of a chat going on with that in the YouTube chat right now about upgrading the U.S. to kind of catch up to the rest of the world in terms of 
um, you know, internet speeds, not only to the home, but also mobile speeds. Um, I noticed I, I actually, my, my girlfriend's Portuguese her family's Portuguese. We go to Portugal a couple times a year. And when I go to Portugal and put in that SIM, I'm like, I'm taking on the next level, man. I mean, the speeds of the internet is just so much better than here. And then I think to myself, you know, is the problem, the infrastructure is the problem. The fact that, you know, in the U S they're just in big cities, there's just a lot more people. You know, it's just bogging down those towers and maybe it's just congestion rather than, um, nah, rather dude, than... go to Japan, go to Tokyo. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like, to Tokyo is not a I... congestion issue. It's the internet is fast in Tokyo and in Shanghai and in, in Hong Kong, it's, it's, it's more of an issue of, uh, just the, the infrastructure itself not being set up correctly like is it oh, too darn expensive you know how much i pay for 150 megabits down and no uh that data caps because data caps don't exist in europe right how much seven euros and 50 cents a month <laughs> but if you want it, oh something faster do you guys have what's the fastest speed you guys can get on the phone 150 but uh my house is gigabit like so you can, you can get gigabit to your house if you want right right yeah. not every house has uh, has gigabit every other it's you've either got like fi uh cable like fiber or 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 gigabit it's it's different yeah. for where you live yeah well yeah in, in basically everywhere in finland but we're a small country so it's really easy to, to change our infrastructure and we're also like democratic socialists so it's like really easy for us to sort of do something like this without too many uh, competing interest groups sort of complaining about it. Right. Yeah, you got me thinking about that Tokyo thing because that's actually a really good point because obviously, you know, those those areas are really highly populated. So mm -hmm. maybe maybe that even makes the U.S. Looks, look worse because, you know, you hear these companies that's talk okay. about congestion and talk about congestion and then it gets baked into your mind that that's actually part of the problem is congestion. But then again, it's like... You know, you got these bigger cities that have the fast internet. Maybe the U.S. just doesn't have the development, not not necessarily the infrastructure as in like the backbone of the of the mobile internet, but just the infrastructure as in the better technology and the towers are like, you know, less interference I, or overcoming interference. America's, it's crazy. But the thing is, that America is the, as, as, the tech innovation capital of the world. Right. It, it's 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 so yeah. astonishing to me as a, as a foreigner. I'm not going to, uh, you know, crap on your country. Or no, anything, go ahead, but, please you know, do. Almost all of the world's technological innovation, almost all of it, but almost all of it, especially in like so software and, and mobile development comes from the States. Uh, so it's, it's shocking that your actual infrastructure is one of the worst. And, and, and yeah, in, in Tokyo, there's 111 million people or whatever it is, and the internet is fast. It's, it's definitely not a congestion issue. It's just that you guys haven't invested Either you haven't invested into getting this stuff fixed, uh, or it's being deliberately throttled. But right, or it's not, do or, that or it's not a priority. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you guys are capitalists, so it's like right. Obviously, they I, they want to sell you a product, so I don't think it's do of uh, uh, can't. Right. Tell you guys from experience, because I've worked for Comcast. I did IT security for Comcast. Uh, I prevented hackers on the network when BitTorrent first came out. And I also worked for Verizon as well. And a lot of it has to do with lobbyists. Um, just pay a lot of money to politicians so that other people can't get in the markets. It's all monopoly. And once they control the market, keep the money for themselves. They don't have to upgrade their infrastructure. Um, as of right now, just for example, Spectrum, which is part of Charter, um, they advertise like, you know, gigabyte speeds, right? But they don't have the... Uh, what I want to say, the, the landlines out there for it, the cable copper lines out there for it, they never updated their boxes um, because they never had to. They had no competition. Right. It's coming out. Exactly. All of a sudden, everybody wants to upgrade. Hey, I want to, uh, you know, I want to sell this to our customers because we don't want them going over to 5G because 5G is going to kill the dinosaurs in the industry. And then 5G is going to become the next monopoly. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yep. I hadn't thought about it like that. Don't you guys have uh, systems in place to stop monopolies? I remember mm -hmm. they tried. To, they almost forced Microsoft yeah, but, to break up, like back in the nineties. You guys remember that? Yeah, but you know, when I was in school, they've. Uh, yes, I do remember that indeed. But companies have found very clever ways here. It's not like the EU. 
companies have found very clever ways to to uh, get around that. Um, You're all like, yeah, mm, it's a sore yeah, subject. So it sucks. To, forgive my ignorance. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. It's okay. It sucks. It sucks because you know. Um, you know, the government doesn't care about local monopolies either. Like for some, for for instance, like in one area, Comcast can be legitimately the only game in town, and your rates are ridiculous, yeah. and you have an internet cap and all this kind of stuff. And then you go, you know, like a thousand miles north, and there's three internet companies competing. You pay way less, and you have unlimited from the same exact company. You know, yeah, like about six companies, I think, who do uh, like yeah, about six ISPs. And yeah. We've only got five million. We're, we're the size of a small American state. Right. So. Right. Yeah. And like in my area, for instance, there's like four or five companies you can get internet from. And Comcast is like, you know, not as expensive as I've heard from my friends and no data caps and stuff like that because they have to compete. You know, whereas in areas where they don't have to compete, like, you know, these people for the same exact service, if not less from the same exact company pay way more. So it's, you know, and, and no one cares and no one cares because it, like you said, capitalists. So comparing is to Finland's a little bit unfair though, because Finland's a very technologically sort of yes. minded country. It's, it's very small and we don't produce anything. Except, yes. I don't know, wood. Uh, so the government's like really really sort of pushing technology. That's why we have so many amazing uh, game developers from Finland. Most of your favorite mobile games and tons of your favorite console games have come from Finland just because we invest so much in it. Uh, and, and the mo I mean, Nokia is a Finnish company, or at least it was before it got, got collapsed and got brought by Microsoft. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but uh, Nokia is a town, by the way. Um, and so, like, for us, uh, because this is the only way we can make money, we have really invested in it because we need it. And it's actually a legal human right to have high speed internet access. Like it's, it's, a, it's considered a, a legal, like fundamental right of you as a human being to have access to high speed internet in Finland. Right. So if, if someone takes away your high speed internet, they are literally infringing upon your human rights. So we're, our, our laws are a bit different yours so comparing Finland to a gigantic and old country like America is is not really fair uh, no. so I I, sh I I can't really just sit here and look down my nose at you because it, it doesn't work like that mm -hmm. yeah but uh, you know this project X cloud kind of bringing it back into the topic a little bit this yeah, project yeah. X cloud is relying on the US market to carry it as well like obviously right. it's a Microsoft product and Microsoft doesn't do too well in, in other comp in other countries obviously it's getting demolished in the EU we won't even talk about Japan um, it's you know obviously they're banking on they're banking on the US for this to take off and if you know, related to what we were just talking about, if America, you know, stays so far behind in internet speeds, a lot of these people that they're marketing to won't even be able to use this kind of thing, you know? And um, yeah. that's going to be a huge hit for them if they're, you know, banking on this and, and putting a lot of money into developing this technology that's cool in its own right. And a lot of people are going to want it. There's going to be a ton of demand for it because of how cool it is to be fully transportable and, you know... Um, like you said, like prop up a tablet or maybe on your switch or what have you. And, um, you know, these people just can't flat out cannot get it. That's going to put more. I think that's going to put more distaste in the brand, even though it's not necessarily the brand's fault that you can't get it. You know, I mean, how awesome would it be to play the Witcher three on your switch oh, absolutely. while you're, while you're on a train or something like mm -hmm. that would be, that would be badass. Without but, a doubt. Like, that's, and I think that uh, the, the 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 future is definitely moving in that direction, whether games companies like it or not. Uh, I think that streaming is going to be the the end game. It just it will depend on how how quickly the average consumer is able to pick it up, I guess. Um, and it's funny. This the Xbox One is a very American console, but it's so much of it is reliant on the internet and. That's so so many complaints about like the dashboard being slow comes from people in the states who have really bad internet and everything on the dashboard is actually pulled off the internet. Right. So if you've got bad internet and you boot up an Xbox One, it performs like garbage. Yep, that's a good point because that's another that's another instance where you know the brand is taking a hit for something that's not their necessarily their fault. 
You know, mm. I, I mean, it's their fault inherently because they designed it that way, but they yeah. designed it that way to be futuristic and to give people features that they desired and people that and features that people think are futuristic and worthy of, you know, next gen or what have you. Um, but mm-hmm. it, at the same regard, like you, it's so dependent on other people and other services that, um, you know, you're the one that takes the blame. It's kind of like the manager at the at the office that their underlings shit the bed. It's and the manager has to answer to the client. You know, um, it's not those underlings. I mean, they may lose their job, but when it comes to the brand the brand identity, I mean, that's going to be on the manager mostly, right? So it's kind of the same thing with Xbox. Um, yeah. They're relying on all these other inherent things under that under them that make up that dashboard are going to make up this Project X Cloud, and if it's just not functional enough for the the masses i mean obviously it's going to work well in in the hubs or in, in huge cities and stuff like that but what about the huge contingencies in the midwest i mean i mean every, if it'll work great in finland but even if everybody <laughs> in go. finland buys x cloud that's only five million sales that's not much right <laughs> on, a, on a global a global scale right exactly sasson what do you think about this man i know you uh you don't have two. I mean, you have better internet than you have when we when we first met you for sure four years ago ish. Um, but is this something that you think you'd use? Uh, you know, even if the internet was the fastest in the world, or are you are you in on this? What do you think? Uh, the only way I'd probably use it it would be um, if you know our next console is only streaming. Like, I don't plan on you know getting my phone and playing like. Forza Horizon Four, or something, you know. Um. Yeah, there's. I think there's. I think there's a lot of people who are just stuck in the I want to own what I own world. You know, there's a lot of people. I I don't know how this is over in Europe or in other regions, but I know there's a lot of people over here in the U.S. that are still stuck on buying physical stuff, and they're not. They're not at the point yet that they're going to get off that that train. You know, they're not. They're not willing to compromise on not owning these things, right? Um. Like, for instance, there was a huge uproar on Twitter recently, totally not related to gaming, but kind of related to this topic, of people that lost their uh, iTunes movies and were going crazy because they were like, oh, why, you know, I bought these movies. Why don't I, why aren't they part of my iTunes? And then Apple responded and they're like, oh, well, sorry, but, you know, we don't have the rights to that movie to be digital anymore. So it, it was off the iTunes store and people were like, well, I bought it, so I should have it, uh, you know, but. If you look at the terms of service, you you don't buy anything. You're buying the rights yeah. to that to rent it, essentially. Yeah, you're buying a license to view it. Right, right. So, yeah. I mean, a lot of people are still, I think, I don't know about, like I said, about in other regions, but a lot of people are stuck on that still in the U.S., and I think that may prevent a lot of people from investing in this as their, <laughs> as their full-time system. Like, maybe some people will buy whatever the next Xbox is, the actual home console, and then you know, buy a couple of these sticks or whatever and does play games, you know, casually, maybe like some games pass stuff or what have you, but um but they prefer to own their stuff. I know a lot of people that's still that's still are there in that in that mindset. Well yeah, man, I was bragging ten minutes ago about owning pointless stuff. Like everyone likes to own things. Um but you know I mean, you, no one really complains about not owning the music on Spotify. I think it's more of a, <laughs> right? I think I think it's more of a branding issue than an actual issue with the the concept itself. Like for example, with iTunes, they sell you a movie, you download it, and you watch it. You know, and to have it taken from you in, in that way kind of feels like they have taken something from you. But uh, on, on Spotify, you it's like an intrinsic part of the experience that you know it's not yours it's on the system and you're streaming it uh so yeah i think the 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 issue with that in general is a bad marketing one but there's always going to be people who want to own something that that's why physical copies exist that's why nowadays that people are buying more stuff digital that's why these big um collector's editions are so popular because people still want to own something from right. the game you know they want a statue or they want a poster or, or or something you know pointless and uh i mean if you look, look behind me i got posters on the wall you know it's it's just people people like stuff uh so it, it, there's always going to be i think that that divide right like right as, as long as you're selling stuff someone's going to want to own stuff uh, and if you stop selling stuff some people are going to be like sell me stuff i need it <laughs> uh, 
but that's a sort of like a wider critique on the human condition. But yeah, it's 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 a tough one. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think it'll ever become. Well, I, I, that's the thing. I, I do think eventually everything will be digital when it comes to gaming, at the very least. I think that physical gaming is going to die, whether we want it to or not. Uh, probably not during our lifetimes, but like our by, by the time our kids are our age. I don't think there will be any physical gaming systems. Yeah, definitely uh, de- not. Dedicated physical gaming systems left. Definitely not, because there won't be the argument of quality either. Because that's what people yeah. are going to argue about this thing, is that they say console quality games, but people, you know, and maybe Clowns can chime in on this, because he is not part of the Project uh, Stream beta that is going on for uh, Google's stream- game streaming platform. Um, and I know the quality on that is good, Clowns has said, but... Um, you know, a lot of people, it, but you look at like PS now, you look at a lot of other streaming platforms that have risen and, and fallen a little bit because the quality just isn't as good. And people know, you know, that's why people are still playing like 4k movies and stuff like Blu-ray movie, 4k Blu-rays. Cause the quality is just so much better than streaming 4k stuff. Um, that the convenience factor hasn't taken over the, the quality in certain things, you know, a lot of people have video files, so that's where that's where you get it most, I think. You know, audio, a lot yeah. of people aren't necessarily audiophiles, so streaming music has really taken off. But um, in terms of video, I think I think a lot of people still would prefer the quality over the convenience. And I think a lot of people are like that with games, too. But Clowns, about Project Stream, have you you've dabbled with it a little bit? Are you impressed with the quality, or...? Is he here? Is he not here? He's muted. Oh, he's muted. Oh, I didn't see that. Sorry. So I'm asking a person that is not here. Sorry. Um, but yeah, I, I can speak for <laughs> I can speak for him a little bit. He t- he talked about Project Stream and he was pretty impressed with it. And uh, some people have some YouTube videos that we know of um, them playing Project Stream and it looks very good. But you know, I know how these games look. I know how that game looks on the Xbox One X, and it's not close to that. So. It's kind of like, yeah, no, you know... I, the the, the quality is never going to be as good, at least uh, in, in, in soon, the yeah. foreseeable future. I mean, like I said, when our kids are our age, probably, yeah. But right. I don't think we are ever going to see that level of dramatic quality. Then again, if you had told me five years ago that streaming 4K movies was going to be really easy and available and on Netflix, and it would look really, really good on, on a 4K TV, I would have told you, like, you're nuts. But if you told me 10 years ago that uh, YouTube was going to one day have 4K streaming, I would have laughed in your face. Right. Uh, so never underestimate it, that's for sure, the, the power of technological innovation. The power of technology. The power of the yes. the power of the internet, as uh, Boogie Two Nine Eight says. I, I can I can go all I can go all Sony about the power of play. The power, yeah, right. Power <laughs> they love their buzzwords. Don't they, they sure do. They sure do. It used to be Nintendo in that regard. Now it's Sony. Yeah, it really is. Um. All right, so that's I think everything about that topic for now. I'm sure you know. We'll get more information about that Project X Cloud, maybe see some demo footage and whatnot, and talk about it again on the podcast. But for now, I think that's where we'll draw the line in the sand. Um, I was going to talk about this Game Boy slide, uh, this Game Boy uh, smartphone case, but Clowns isn't here, and apparently somebody's cutting their grass right now where, where Assassin's at. So um, I think I'll put that one off until, until next week. <laughs> um, and also we've been going on for like an hour and 45 minutes at this point, And, uh, I think we're gonna, sorry, I do ramble. I, no, no, not at all. You were great. And I think a lot of people in the chat loved having you on and I'm, we obviously loved having you on. So, um, officially too long. Don't read version is thank you for being here. And, uh, I know you had to stay up a long, you know, a late night tonight. Uh, hopefully, we didn't keep you up too long past your normal bedtime. Oh my God, it's two sixteen in the morning. There, okay, uh, forget it. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, thanks for coming on, man. We really appreciate it, and hope to, you know, maybe if you have a day off work the next day, hopefully we can have you on again because I think you were oh absolutely a natural, no, really as they fun. say. Um, really fun, really fun. I, yeah. I, absolute pleasure. Always great to talk about to talk about games with people who actually uh, enjoy them and, and play them. And absolutely, it's, yeah. It's, it's awesome. Absolutely. Um, I'll give you a minute here to plug all your things if you want to take that. 
opportunity. Oh yeah, sure. I mean, I'm uh, d despite social media being my job, I don't, uh, I don't really uh, pimp myself too much. But you can you can definitely follow me shit post anime gifts on uh, Twitter if you feel like, which is at delicious cheese, and that's cheese with a Z, by the way, because someone else has the correct spelling of that. Uh, and basically, that's my nickname everywhere on Xbox Live or on on Reddit everywhere. So. Uh, that's that's what I do. Um, I don't really need to advertise uh, my, the games company I work for. That's a, but if you feel like downloading Hill Climb Racing 2 and spending all your money on it, I won't, uh, I won't complain. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, and, Just make and, sure you tell them recent. Yeah, right. Exactly. Get a little, refer <laughs> or a little referral bonus, right? Um, I wish yeah. it worked like that. But yeah, uh, you know, check them out on Party Chat Podcast too. I mean, we had we that had, too. Yeah, of course. We you had mentioned that already, but we had Ross on um, last week, and we had Ross on. Uh, we did Ross some streaming. So with, good at the plugs. Oh my so god! Yeah. Oh plugs. please, he took the opportunity. Like I didn't even have to ask him. Uh, he just transitioned <laughs> like right into it. But um, he, uh, well, you know, he, he, Ross has your job on our podcast. He's the sort of the host and the the master of ceremony. Yes, so he's, he, it's his job. Except for last that. week, the most recent episode, right? That you guys posted, I think today. I think that was you, right? Was that the, me? I think that was yeah, you. Well, this yeah, week. Ross wasn't there. He Ross was away, so I had to sort of do something. But whenever it's me and Clay, uh, uh, we just nothing nothing organized happens <laughs> <laughs> well sometimes those are the best shows sometimes those get yeah, you know, so. off tangent but uh totally genuine and organic um mm -hmm. but uh yeah you guys obviously can find us uh just search for as a quarter you'll find us everywhere we're on spotify itunes youtube obviously people watching periscope i haven't seen the chat really too much tonight but thank you for joining us on there um and you can find us on Twitter at 4GWQ Podcast because Four Guys of Quarters is too long for a name on there. So we couldn't get that. But um, until next week, we will see you guys later. We may be streaming a little bit of uh, Call of Duty since that comes out tonight or tomorrow or wherever you're at right now. Time changes, obviously. But for us in the U.S., it comes out in uh, like five hours or so, right? Four and, four and a half hours. So um, we'll probably be streaming a little bit of that this weekend. But until then... We will uh, see you guys later. Peace. Peace.